out on myself, uh, six and a half years in the Air Force. Um, I actually had an opportunity to uh, play college football. Had a scholarship, signed on the dotted line. A lot of my buddies that graduated before me in high school were already up there, so I enjoyed a lot of party my second half of my school year. My GPA got too low. Coach called me in May, said, hey, go ahead and do junior college. Called me and my dad in his office. And uh, my dad said, well, do they pay for his school? No, sir, they don't. He said, okay, well, you're not gonna be seeing him again. So, appreciate your offer, thanks a lot. My dad, who was a Army veteran, who is a truck driver, never took a day off, told me he's gonna take a day off, he's gonna help me get a job. The next day, we're at the Armed Forces recruiters. <laughs> <laughs> he let me choose, that was the deal. You, you choose, but you're the oldest of five, you blew it, you're gone, take it. So, I ended up going Air Force, my uncle was Air Force, my dad and my grandfather were Army. Nothing against Army, I just, when he came out of the Army, he didn't really have any skills. So he's an over road trucker, my grandfather's an over road trucker, and I promise you I wasn't gonna be an over road trucker. So actually, I should be an over road trucker now, those guys are making bike anyway. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, with that happening, went to the Air Force, six and a half years, had a great career. I, I'd hate to you know, tell you my career, it's not as uh, unbelievable as your guys. I played uh, all Air Force softball my last three and a half years, traveled, hit the slow pitch softball. So I uh, had a lot of fun doing that. Um, then it's time to grow up. At 24, it's like, hey, it's time for me to get going here. Um, there's a couple of things I wish I would have done while I was in the Air Force. I actually take advantage of the college. I took one semester, 4.0, said, no, I'm not gonna need college, I'm out of here. And, uh, you know, put myself in positions early on to actually have to work harder because I didn't have the mentor helping me out as I went. So anyway, I got out. Um, which a lot of you guys are going through right now, transition. Where do I go, what do I do? You're trying to figure out which way's up, right? Uh, luckily at 24, I had a cousin who was selling mobile homes. And uh, he said, hey, come work for me. I was like, man, I'm not selling trailers. And he said, let me show you what I'm making. And I said, how fast can you get me hired? <laughs> I mean, so I went from making $14,000 a year, I think, at 24 in the Air Force. Um, my first six months, I made about seven grand selling mobile homes. And at 24 years, I probably spent 75 grand uh, that same year. I was having a good time. So anyway, just my career uh, escalated. Uh, I just kept getting recruited to other places, so I was kind of on an escalator success. By the time I was 29, I was a, a, a general manager. By the time I was 30, I was a district manager, had 12 stores underneath me. Um, in 2000, I actually was in a car accident, driving home late one night. You know, instead of just spending the night, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and push it and get home. Fell asleep at the wheel, uh, died four times on the way to the hospital. Had to redo my entire face, saw titanium. Uh, I was married to young, small children at the time. And all of a sudden, money wasn't important to me. My family was, quality of life was. And uh, at that same time, that's probably the, really the turning point in my life. Um, see, when I came out of the Air Force, I always thought everybody was doing me a favor by giving me a job. I thought they were doing me a favor. So I was worried about losing my general man, uh, being the district manager, because I knew being out, they're about to bring somebody else in. And while I was laying in a hospital bed, I was talking to my mom, and I uh, told her, you know, that I was worried about it, because, you know, I'm either gonna have to move, or I'm gonna have to go back to the general manager, back to the lot, you know, there was a lot of unknowns at that time. And my mom was like, you know, it would seem to me, Tim, they'd be more worried about losing you then you should be worried about losing them. Because I know how much money you're making. So if you're making that much money, I know they gotta be making a lot of money. So they should be more worried about losing you than the other way around. And that's really the first time at 30 years old I realized my, my worth. I realized, like, wait a minute, she's absolutely right. Right, they are doing me a favor by giving me the opportunity to work there, but I'm crushing it for them, right? And get rewarded too from them for that, for that thing. So at that time, I'm at home, recovering, and uh, my wife comes in, and are you going back to mobile homes? No, what are you gonna do? I really don't know. I was watching Jerry Maguire on TV. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna be a Jerry Maguire. And she was like, you gonna recall the doctor because you really hit your head too hard. <laughs> like, you don't even know an athlete. You're not even college educated. Like, how are you gonna be Jerry Maguire? I don't know, that's what I wanna do. That's what I'm gonna do. Uh, probably a few weeks later, maybe a month later, a friend of mine from Mohawk called me and said, hey, 
got this opening, we're building this new company, it's corporate, come in, the VP's gonna be here a little while, once he leaves, we're gonna get you as VP, but you gotta come in and learn. So I did, became VP, ended up uh, getting recruited by a Fortune 500 company, ended up being executive vice president for them, all by the time I was probably 32, 33 maybe. Um, just an unbelievable great life, quality of life. You know, um, I'm usually working seven days a week, making X, now I'm working five maybe, five and a half, if you add up all the hours, and being able to spend time with my kids actually making more money than what I was. While that was going on, my wife, she worked for the uh, Federal Bureau of Prisons, and we went to, um, I don't know, kind of like a wars banquet they have every year, and it's just like chalk on the, uh, you know, fingernails on the chalkboard, right? And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go over to that back bar. I'll be back there having a few. I'm done with this deal. I'll be back here. So I go back there, just about four little seats at the bar. There's another gentleman sitting there. I sit down. Hey, how are you? How are you? He's the chair between us. And he got my attention. He found my love. He said, you want to do a shot? I was like, yeah, absolutely. Dude. I can't take no more of this pain. I don't even work here. So I said, absolutely, let's do a shot. So we start drinking, having fun. Next thing I know, my wife's coming back telling us to be quiet. So we're, we're actually having a really good time. So I gave him my card, not, not really thinking too much about it. And uh, he said, hey, what do you do? I said, I'm executive vice president of sales for his company. Gave my card. Um, I said, what do you do? He goes, oh, I'm retired. I said, really? Retired? You look pretty young to be retired. You know, what you did? He goes, well, I played in the NFL. Okay, well, what's your name? Well, let me old sniff. So I said, number 32, Chicago Bears. Yeah. Started up a few more drinks. Didn't think too much about it. Went on my way. Stenson went on his way. Two weeks later, phone rings. It's Stenson. Hey, man, do you want to? You want to represent me? Now here's the opportunity I've been waiting for, right? This is what I want to be, right? And I said, no, absolutely not. I don't know anything about that. I don't want you to put your family's financial future in my hands. Man, I appreciate it. Thanks for thinking of me. I'm going to take a pass. And he's like, nope, I'm not going to let you. You have to get the gap. We're going to kill this. I'm going to teach you how to do it. And we're going to go do it. And I said, okay, you're in, I'm in. Let's go. So Stess and I started working together. He educated me, mentored me how to get us in the doors, and he was the closer. Once I got us in, he would come in. They, were, they would end up hiring him for endorsement deals, things like that. So from there, I started working with professional athletes on their name branding, marketing, endorsement opportunities. I worked with everybody from Troy Aikman, Emma Smith, Michael Irvin, the Super Bowl MVP, Larry Brown, and you name them. Um, I worked out. I'm actually an honorary member of the NFL Player Association. Never even played it down. But because these guys respect me so much, they actually took me and said, hey, this guy needs to be a part of our organization. And there's only three honorary guys in the, in the entire United States that's an honorary member of the NFL Player Association. Luckily, I'm one of them. I got the same card they got, and I don't even have a C CTE to, you know, show it, right? <laughs> so that's the brain damage, if you all know what I'm talking about. I do have brain damage. That's all about the story. Anyway, <laughs> with that being said, so it started kind of – within myself of how much more can I really do here? What can I not do? So, you know, I'm gonna do a Super Bowl party. My wife said, what the hell you know about doing Super Bowl parties? <laughs> Can't be much different growing up in Southeast Missouri on the river, get kegs, get beautiful women, <laughs> guys would show up, right? <laughs> did pretty good on that. That's what put me through high school. Also got me out of college. <laughs> right? <laughs> right in the Air Force, right? So we did that. And uh, first party, you name it, they pulled the number one Super Bowl party in Jacksonville that year. Uh, if there was a celebrity in town, they were at that event. And of course, the networking, having fun, my network just kept growing. People were introducing people to me, that kept going. At the same time now, I still got corporate life going on. My shareholders loved me because we had pro athletes up in our office all the time hanging out. <laughs> so they loved it, right? They were like, oh man, keep bringing them. You know, oh, hey, we're gonna get a suite. Can you get one of you guys to come hang out with us? Absolutely. So it was just a great marriage. 2008, when the economy took a plunge, we had about 300 people in our company. I had about 175 people underneath me. Shareholders brought me in one morning and said, hey, we need to get rid of about half this company. Who are we, who are we picking? We don't, you know them. Who are we picking? And I said, you know what? You start with my salary. That's gonna save a lot of jobs. I'm not, I'm not firing anybody today, right? So as a wife, okay, your husband shows up, Pretty good six-figure job, shows up at one in the afternoon. What are you doing home? Oh, I, I resigned today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, what, what are we planning on doing? I don't know. I know I'm not firing half the people, though. 
So I'm done. And I tell my wife this, and I, I kind of regret it. But I tell her, I said, I'd rather be broke than have to fire all those people. Right? And then guess what? 08 hit. 09 hit. 2010 hit. Let me tell you something. Broke? So you're used to doing this, vacations, or anything you want to do. Anything. Got the house, got everything, cars, everything. If you could dream that life that you probably want, I, I, almost, I would almost bet my house that I had. Almost lost everything. I couldn't, and I was applying at Target, anywhere, just get a job. It got that bad, right? So I finally just picked myself up. It's like, you know, what, what are you doing? You're Tim Clunt. Come on, let's get your stuff together. <laughs> Right after that conversation, I hit my knees. I said, you know, you know what, good Lord? I know you're there. I'm not carrying this deal no more. I'm done. You can have it. I'm, I'm tired of fighting this fight. I know you're there. You've been waiting on it. Show up. Now, I'll still narrate this story. I needed $10,000. I'm telling you, $10,000 to save my house, cars, lights, you name it. $10,000. I prayed. Later that afternoon, a good friend of mine, Rocket Ishmael, called me. He said, hey, we're starting this, uh, Dunder Armour's starting this uh, mouthpiece thing, this performance mouthpiece. We need your help getting into some of the athletes. Can you help me? Sure can. Probably an hour after that, a good friend of mine played for the Cowboys, Patrick Craig, called me. He said, hey, man, what you doing tomorrow? I said, mm, just hanging out. Because you got to remember, even when you're getting your rear end kit, you still got a brand. Right? Nobody can know you're really getting, your, getting a hand it to you, right? You still got to be up here. Right? So PC calls, hey bro, what you doing? Let's come have let's come have lunch. I said, man, I don't know if I can make it. Come on, no, no, come on, come on. Have come have lunch. And uh, I went outside, I told Eric, I went outside, turned my truck on. Where's my gas gauge? You got enough gas to get from Fort Worth to Dallas and back. <laughs> right? That's what I need to check. That's where I was. Okay. I did had three three quarters of a tank. Thank you, Jesus. We'll, we'll make it. We'll make it there and make it back at least. At least they're going to take everything and we'll have lunch and pizza. <laughs> right? So I go there. We have lunch. Um, PC says, hey, let's go to the house, play some mad. Man, you know, I got to get back. You know, just a good little lunch, just hanging out, just buddies. He's like a baby brother. He said, man, come in the house for a second. I got to give you something. So we go in. Nobody knows anything about my good Lord's thought. Nobody. Not even my wife. Right? This is between me and God. So we go in, go to PC's office, breaks this big thing open, checkbook's in it. He votes it up and hands it to me. And he says, hey, bro. I said, nah, no, no, I'm good. He's like, nah, you're not good. And you've done so much for me, you never charged me a dime. This is a little bit of probably what I owe you. Take it. Okay. Stuck in my pocket, hugged it out, left. I get, it, get my truck, get outside of his gated community, get on the highway. Open it up. Anybody want to guess the amount? <laughs> Ten grand. Ten grand to a penny. Right? Guess what? Yes. Jesus, you, we're good now. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going another direction, right? I'm with you. You got me now, right? Because you asked for it, you receive, right? You've got to have faith included in that, right? So, not to go too crazy on y'all, that, that was the turning point in my life. That's the reason why I, I, I drug that out. That was my turning point. To, you know what, I accomplish anything I want. The only person to hold me back is me. What can I not do? Now, if you're married again, if you're a wife, spouse, most spouses like consistency, you know, just nice little corporate job, get the check. We know when the checks are coming. So you can only imagine my wife, it's about, that's the hardest job in this world is probably being my wife. Uh, it's like this. You know what I'm writing a book. What? You passed third grade in, in, in reading. I'm not writing one. Right? I'm doing this. What? I'm starting this company. What? And guess what? Seven figures later, on, just a few, few short years from not having to, I got to tell you one more story, too. Before I went to PC's house that morning, before I went to Patrick's house, took out trash, came in, washed my hands. I just took a shower, came in, washed my hands, water's off. Like, I'm like, man, I just took a shower. Oh. 
So that was adding a little bit of pressure too. Right? <laughs> you know, I'm not calling mom and going, oh, by the way, one of just got shot off today. I'm just like, I'm just going to be like, what? Don't want to go watch the pack the crate. Firehouse sucks. It's better place. And I'm going to move on, right? Well, again, all that going on, taking place, what I realized is, again, our only competition is us, right? And that's what you have to figure out in your transition. Is really how big do you want to be? A lot of people just take anything they get, right? I was an auto mechanic. I guess I'm going to be an auto mechanic. Is that what you want to be? Not really. Who do you want to be? Right? Then what do you want to be? So my thing is, if an uneducated individual like myself can pretty much do anything I want at this point, you know, at this point, my wife doesn't even question me. I'm doing this. Okay. I'm doing that. Okay. You know, she thinks I'm nuts, but then we'll pull it off. Right? She's like, Poof. I can't even believe it. That's the problem with most of us. We can't believe it. Right? So, me and my love for softball, we ended up, um, after my, I got two kids in college, one's at Texas Tech, one's at TCU. My love for softball, I get to be, a, you know, I get to be a kid again. I'm not running around to all their sports. So it's kind of like, oh, I'm going to play, you know, I'm going to play a little softball. Well, what I want to do, let's do celebrity softball events, right? So I sit on the board for the Lone Survivor Foundation, if you know who Marcus Latrell is. Dear friend of mine, first game we did was in uh, Houston four years ago. We did vets, uh, what we consider our celebrity veterans, you know, our boys from Big Galaxy, a bunch of my friends. We played Marcus' celebrity team. We got Taylor Kish and Jenny Finch and a bunch of great, Roger Clemens, who's a good friend, all came out. And it kind of built from there, and then last year I did one, if everybody knows, University of Texas, University of Oklahoma robbery, UTOU weekend in Dallas, one of the biggest weekends in Dallas. They kicked the state fair off about that time, and it's just kind of crazy. So I called Clemens, I said, Rocky, man, why don't we do a UTOU game? And let's just do this, and we'll raise some money for Long Survivor Foundation as well. So we did that last year. Rocket calls me, I don't know, probably 45 days before the game, says, hey, what do you think of Toby Keith comes and McConaughey? Think they can play? You think about it. <laughs> of course they can play. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so again, McConaughey came, Toby came. We had such a great time that uh, Rocket, Toby, and Matthew all ended up being partners of mine in this game moving forward, right? So, again, when you don't think it's possible, trust me, it's possible. You can do anything you want. The number one thing about Matthew, though, Probably the most pressure about that game, anybody got an idea what it probably was? It's getting the picture with my wife and Matthew. Right? So I don't care what happens with this damn game, I'll tell you this right now. If I don't get a picture of Matthew McConaughey, you know, we've been through some stuff. If I don't get that picture with McConaughey, forget it. Right? If, you're, if you're Italian, if you're German, I'm, I'm German Italian, so it's heaven forget it, right? In my household with me. But anyway, that's where it just, it all comes back together, right? So again, I wrote a book, and first I wrote a book with Tactical 16, that Eric Scholl, CEO, kept calling me, hey, write a book, write a book, write a book. So I did. I wrote one on myself, I read it, and I was like, man, this story's about me, and it sucks. I wouldn't even buy it. If, if I didn't know this guy, I'd be like, man, this guy, this poor guy here. This, it, it just wasn't my forte. But I said, I'll tell you what, I will write a book, if you let me just write how I got from A to Z how I personally went in life, because there is a structure that if you follow and you stay on it, right, you can achieve your dreams. You can achieve your goals. And Julia was talking about goals earlier, and I just want to see a show of hands. How many people have goals? How many actually have goals? How many people have those goals written down? Okay, 95% greater chance of achieving your goals if they're written down. Think about that, 95%. So I got my ghost on my bathroom mirror. I brush my teeth every morning, I'm reading it. You know, I got them on my computer. Uh, I used to have them in my truck. I don't know what happened to I think my wife got tired of looking at them. <laughs> you know what, and then what happens is, after a while, guess what? All of a sudden you go, wait a minute, those ghosts aren't even big enough anymore. You start scratching stuff off, and you go, man, I made those too easy, right? I made it too easy. So with all that being said with my life, there's a few things I would, for me personally, in hiring people, I never had a fire because I always told them, I'm going to hire you. You're going to fire yourself. Unfortunately, I'm going to be the person God tell you you got to leave. You can't stay. But I'll fire people. All right? You, you're going to do that to yourself. But going through all that, knowing what HR looks, looks for, okay, 
The problem with the disconnect is, is that if you've been in the military, if you're retired, you've been in more than 10 years, most how most of y'all finish your career with a coffee cup in your hand, right? So your go is what? Oh, I'm, I'm a manager. I need to be coming out being a manager. I need to be making six figures. No, you don't. What you need is a job. That's your first thing, right? That's your first thing, what you need is a job, right? If you're that good, you can't get to six figures. You can't get to management if you ain't got a job, right? So first thing is, go get a job. Doesn't matter. Nothing's above you, I promise you. Nothing, nothing. Get in there, show them what you can do. Be that leader you're trained to be. Be that professional you're trained to be. Go in and show them why they made the best choice of their day in hiring you. That'll get, that's the first step. Second step is, be the first one to work, the last one to leave. You know who for, usually the first person is turning off the lights? Usually CEO. You know usually the last person turning off the lights? Usually CEO, in my experience. Also, that same guy keeps starting to see you first. Coffee's already on. You're the last person. You're on top of the leaderboard all the time. Guess what? Who is this? Who's this person? What's he doing for us? This guy's beating me, right? That's, that's the second one. Third one is dress and press, right? Dress and press. You want to be CEO? Start dressing like CEO. You want to be, well, besides Cuban, I mean, I'm kind of going towards Cuban now. Let me just wear some sports and T-shirt. I'm happy in that mode anymore, right? But uh, when I get to Cuban's money, I will on, on full time. So, but again, always rest and press. Talk, Julie talked about social media, right? Keep yourself professional on there. You will be amazed. I do the same thing. As soon as I meet somebody, LinkedIn, I'll go, I'll go hunt you down, research and Google you. I'll find out every single thing I can find out about you before we even have a second conversation, maybe before we even have a first conversation. Guess what? If I'm doing it, everybody else is doing it too. They start looking at your social media, you got craziness on there, or, you know, you're passed out, and your face all marked up on your, on your Facebook page. I'm probably not. It's probably ain't going to be a good relationship. Unless we're going to have shots later on, just being everybody says, if it's a drinking thing, then we're going to be real good friends. Hiring, probably not, right? So again, there's a little bitty things like that. The, the, the final thing I would tell you is, cheat okay just cheat now we're always told and we're always scolded in elementary and high school and college if you cheat what happens you fail you get disciplined right our mindset is it's not good to cheat the reality is that outside of school cheat find the person who's doing it right and god damn why try to re why try to redo the wheel right somebody was telling me they got hired at a job and what happens when you get hired? You go through your little HR whatever, and then they take you and they sit you with somebody. Guess who you go learn from? Right? This person. You know what my question was? Is that the number one person in this company? Is that DC number one? No. Where's the number one person? Oh, they're over there. Okay. Well, that's who I'm sitting with. Because I, I want to be the number one. I want to know what he or she's doing. Because I'm going to cheat. I'm going to do the same thing, and then I'm going to throw the TK Supersonic case in there. <laughs> my personality, right? And I'm going to blow past them, right? That's what I do, right? If I want to have a Super Bowl party, that's what I do. I call people who throw Super Bowl parties. If I want to build a company, what I do? I call friends of mine who build companies, right? The other thing is about birds of, birds of a feather, right? You hang out with $25,000 a year people, guess what you're probably making? $25,000. You know, it's just a little trish. I promise you. You know, I promise you, I have a lot of millionaire, billionaire friends, which is kind of funny to think that you even have friends that are billionaires that you can actually call. You know, how many people in here right now has a billionaire friend? More than one, more than two? You can just call and hang out with? It's kind of crazy, right? Those are the guys I like to talk to, right? Those are the guys. There's two, there's two types I like to talk to, successful and good lord. Those are only really two people I care to talk to. Those are only two people going to help me out, right? To be, be honest with you. So again, what happens is we start shotgunning ourselves because we don't know where we want to be, where we where we want to go, what we want to do. So we just it's like being on a having a floaty in the middle of the ocean. You just try and do anything you can to get a piece of dirt to save yourself, right? Get off the floaty. Get focused. Regroup. Who do I want to be? Where do I want to be? What do I want to be? 
Get your goals written out. Spruce yourself up, right? I mean, listen, no offense. The people in this room are the best of the best. You're the best of the best. That's true. You got more education, more training, more leadership skills, more than anything than 95%, probably more than that, 98% of the people that's trying to tell you how to do your job. But what happens? We sometimes let our egos get in the way. Now, I did 25 years at the military. Who cares? Congratulations, you got retirement for it. Don't be a jack crap out here in the corporate world, bro. Who cares? I don't care. Congratulations <laughs> to you, though. Thank you for your service. But I really don't care. Right? What I do care about is what you do here. There's two people. There's paycheck players and paycheck makers in a company. Paycheck makers are your top 20%. But you know what? I ain't got time to chat with you. Cigarette break? Mm -hmm. I quit, I'll just quit smoking if it's going to cost me money. Right? You know, I only see a lot of big money people smoking. Ain't got time for it. I'm busy. Paycheck, paycheck players. It's kind of like being chased like a buy a bear, right? In the corporate world. I just don't want to be the worst one. Get fired. I just kind of hang in this middle a little bit. Right? We'll hang right out in here. Sweet spot. I don't have to do too well. I just don't, and I don't have to do too bad. I'm just gonna hang out here and be comfortable, right? I don't know about you all. I, I don't ever stay in comfort, comfort zone. I don't like it. It gets me, ooh, gotta shake something. We gotta do something, right? That's just me personally how I am. It drives my wife crazy. If I don't have nine things going on one time, I, got, I must be a silly, honestly. I'm probably a silly. Because I'm always here, there, and everywhere, all the time, right? But again, that's what I enjoy, personally. But again, figure out what you do. Organization is another big key. All this stuff is in my book. Stop whining, start winning, okay? Because that's what a lot of us do. We whine about what we're not getting. We whine about what our friend got. We whine about our old Army buddy, an old Air Force buddy, got a great job. I didn't get one. I was smarter than that, dude, right? Stop whining, start winning. Get yourself focused. <coughs> Simple basic rules, it's easy, right? It really is. Use the cheat system, all right? Cheat system is you gotta have a carry heart for C, right? You gotta have a heart for H. You gotta, be, you gotta care and have a heart for individuals. You can't just go in there and be kicking doors, it's all about me, right? E, to me, E and A and cheat is probably the most important. Enthusiasm and attitude, and they kind of control each other can't be enthusiastic, why would I even want you around me? If you're not excited, I'm damn sure not going to be excited. Go over there with the paycheck players. Go clock in, right? And the final one is T, timeliness, urgency, right? There is no tomorrow. Tomorrow's a gift, right? I'm not worried about tomorrow. Let's, what are we doing today? What are we going to get done today? How am I going to beat my, how am I going to beat my yesterday's self today? Because that's who I'm in competition with me. Right? But again, I promise you, as God my witness, I'm standing here. If you want it, this better will be achieved. You have to go kick the door in, take the opportunity. When you have it, you run with it. That makes sense? So besides that, let's go hit the bar. <laughs> Taking care of all our projects were done. And my eight